untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game for video. Today we're taking a look at a Sultai self mill combo deck titled Frostfill, as suggested and voted on by my supporters on Patreon. It's a combo deck built around Morit of the Frost, a 5 mana 0 0 legendary snow creature shapeshifter from Kaldheim, and it also has Changeling, which means it has every creature type, and we may have Morit enter the battlefield as a copy of any permanent we control, except it's legendary and snow in addition to its other types, and if it's copying a creature, it also enters with two additional plus one plus one counters on it and it has changeling which means it has every creature type so that also means that it's an elf that we can get back with our rare saga Harald unites the elves which on the first chapter mills three cards and then we can put an elf or Tyvar card from our graveyard onto the battlefield and then we don't really care too much about the second or third chapters so Harald unites the elves enters the battlefield can return one of our elves to the battlefield which means it can get back Morit of the Frost which can copy any of our permanents in including our sagas, so it can copy our Harald Unites the Elves, it turns into a legendary saga Harald Unites the Elves, which once again mills three cards and returns an elf from our graveyard to the battlefield. So if we happen to have a second copy of Morit of the Frost in our graveyard, we can once again bring it back, copy our saga. At this point we control two legendary sagas named Harald Unites the Elves, so we have to sacrifice one of them to the legendary rule, so Morit will end up in our graveyard, where we can once again bring it back with the saga that just entered the battlefield with the first chapter after milling three cards and returning an elf, so we can keep looping this for as long as we want, which will essentially result in us having no library left since we milled it all with the first chapter from Harald Unites the Elves. So how does this win us the game? Well, we do need one additional combo piece, and that's where Sage of Mysteries comes in handy, a 1 mana 2 human wizard with constellation saying whenever an enchantment enters a battlefield under our control, target player mills two cards. So every time we bring back our saga, we can mill the opponent for two, which we can keep repeating until both us and our opponent's libraries are empty, and then we simply pass priority by copying something else with Murit instead of our saga, and then the opponent will draw from an empty library and lose the game. So that's how the combo operates. So all we need are two copies of Murit of the Frost in our graveyard, at least one Sage of Mysteries in play, and then we need to cast our Herald to Unites the Elves, and that will essentially win us the game. So that's our basic game plan. Let's take a look at the rest of the deck. Of course, Sage of Mysteries is also an important enabler, early on in the game since we have plenty of enchantments to trigger constellation to mill ourselves first and fill our graveyard to hopefully put two copies of Moritz in our graveyard to eventually get back. Then at 2 mana we've got 2 copies of Aphemia the Cacophony, a 2 mana 2-1 two legendary enchantment creature Harpy with flying, so it also triggers constellation, and at the beginning of our end step we may exile an enchantment card from our graveyard, and if we do we get to make a 2-2 two -two black zombie creature token, which also has some additional synergy besides just giving us a bit of a board presence to buy time to set up our combo. Then we've got two copies of Mire Triton, a 2-1 a zombie merfolk with death touch, and when Triton enters battlefield we mill two cards and gain two life, so it's a zombie for the zombie synergies, a death touch creature that can trade off and buy time, and it also mills us to help fill the graveyard. And then we've got the full playset of the Binding of the Titans as another enchantment saga that on the first chapter mills three cards from each library, on the second chapter we can exile up to two target cards from graveyards, and for each creature card exiled this way we also gain one life, so this is great at exiling and escape creatures from the opponent's deck, and then on the final chapter we can return target creature or land card from our graveyard to our hand, so this can get back one of our key creatures like Sage of Mysteries, or perhaps our Acolyte of Affliction, which we'll get to in a second, which can get back any permanent from our graveyard, including our Sagas, in case we need to get back Harald Unites the Elves, and then we also have the full playset of Wolf Willow Haven, an enchantment aura that enchants a land, producing additional green mana whenever we tap it, so this helps us ramp, which is especially useful if we need to cast Acolyte of Affliction to get some expensive cards back from the graveyard. Then at 3 mana, full playset of Timurit Calls the Dead, which on the first two chapters mills three cards from our library, and then we may exile a creature or enchantment card from our graveyard, and if we do we get to make a 2-2 black zombie creature token, and then on the final chapter we gain X life and scry X, where X is the number of zombies we control, so that also synergizes with the zombie tokens from Ephemia, and the zombie that is Mire Triton, and the scry X is very useful at helping us assemble the combo, and of course milling six cards is also useful 
useful for putting Morit in our graveyard, which of course we don't want to exile. And then we've got a full playset of Lanor Visionary as a 3 mana 2 2 elf druid that draws a card when it enters the battlefield and taps for green mana. So this helps us ramp, can draw a card, which is always nice. And then it's also an elf that we can potentially get back with our Unites the Elves if we happen to draw multiple copies and don't have Morit in the graveyard to combo off. And then besides our rare saga, we also have the full playset of Acolyte of Affliction, a 4 mana 2 3 human cleric that when it enters the battlefield mills 2 cards, and then we may return a permanent card from our graveyard to our hand. So this is perfect for getting back Herald Unites the Elves if we don't have one in hand already, or perhaps a Sage of Mysteries if we just need it to combo off. And then the full playset of Morit of the Frost, which ideally ends up in our graveyard, but we're also fine to just cast for 5 mana, maybe copying a saga, which is one way to eventually get it in the graveyard to then combo off. And then our mana base consists of 12 pathways in the Sultai colors, as well as our Zagoth Triome, and then a few basic lands with 3 forest, 3 swamp, and 2 basic islands. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Couple of sagas. Hopefully end up with another 2 copies of Marit in the graveyard. Facing Temple of Epiphany. For now, just gonna run out Binding. And by the time we reach the final chapter, we should have some things to get back. Especially after we play Timurid Calls the Dead. So... Genesis Ultimatum probably implies some sort of Tibble's trickery shenanigans. And I guess we'll get rid of these. Don't really want to exile the rune stuff, generally speaking. Alright, um, could also go for Willful Haven, but I think I prefer getting a Timurid in play. And then we can get back a land with our Binding, which will help us cast an Acolyte of Affliction. Get back a Blue Lands, doesn't matter too much which one. And then get back Acolytes, there's one more in a Graveyard already. And then now, I guess I don't mind Haven plus another Binding, since there's nothing specific I want with Acolyte. Alright, so the Coma also... Still doesn't make it clear whether it's Tibalt's Trickery or Ramp. Might just be Ramp. So, get this Cry a bunch. And then don't really want any of these. So, play Acolytes. So one more in the graveyard, still no Sage of Mysteries. Ah, there's a Sage of Mysteries, so... Yeah, I could get that back now, or I could go for Timurid Calls the Dead. And then the final chapter of our Binding can get back Sage, that seems better. And this will help me mill a little bit more next turn. Could have also gotten back Binding to play right now. So our opponent hasn't done a whole lot so far. Cycles, Rogrin Triome. Alright, there we go, Stone Coil countered by Tibal's Trickery. And hits Kuma. Alright. Alright. 
so we'll see whether or not the opponent wants to tap anything down. Doesn't look like it. And then get back Sage. So we can play Sage, play Temerate Calls the Dead. Could also play Moritz of the Frosts and then not copy anything just to put it in the graveyard. I guess that's one way to do it. So yeah, let's do that. Bit of a strange play, but it should work. And then next turn we can unite the elves and combo off. So they need to, I guess, tap my lands with Koma Serpents. I'll just take it. Here goes nothing. Get back Moritz. Unless my opponent has instant speed removal for Sage of Mysteries, there's nothing they can really do to stop this. Sacrifice one of the legendary sagas. Mill the opponents. Get back Moritz. Get to see the opponent's entire library. Opponent has 20 cards remaining, so 10 more iterations of the loop. And our opponent sees the writing on the wall and concedes. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This hand is a lacking green mana, otherwise it's actually not too bad. I'm gonna try it on the draw. We've got a few draw steps to find a green source. And then we've got Sage, Unites the Elves, and a Moritz, which will end up in the graveyard eventually. All right, there we go. So we just need to find one more Moritz. Postpone my decision on which half to play here, although probably going to be blue, so we have double blue for Marit. Midnight Clock. Well, that sort of counters our mill plan, although I don't think it's going to matter too much. And then for now, Visionary is fine. If our opponent has exactly the last hour counter on Midnight Clock, the turn we are planning to kill them, they can potentially reshuffle and then we'll be left with an empty library and we'll lose. So that's the scenario we want to avoid. Fresh Taunter, alright. So we might see some sweepers at some point. I guess we have access to 5 mana, so we can go Visionary plus Binding, mill ourselves. Seems fine. Start with Visionary. And we do see Shatter the Sky.
Line of Hope destroys our saga, sure. That's acceptable. Another binding. So we'll start there, I think. Okay, there's one more Ritz. So now I'm tempted to just play more Ritz without copying anything, just have two in the graveyard and then next turn we can combo off, assuming Sage doesn't die and if it does we can still Acolyte it back. So, yeah, let's Moritz not copy anything. Could copy my Saga, which will eventually go away, but this way we're guaranteed to combo off next turn if nothing goes wrong. So we'll decline. Sanctum of all. Alright. So I guess our opponent was a Sanctum deck after all. Can get rid of some Sanctums, I guess. And hopefully there's no interaction. And even if there is, we still have Acolyte of Affliction. But it doesn't seem like there is. So we can start milling the opponent now. Opponent can put two more counters on Midnight Clock, but that's not going to be enough to prevent a mill from killing them. So yeah, the fact that we can potentially play Moritz and just have it go to the graveyard actually happens to be a relevant interaction. Also in a longer, grindier game where we don't have all the combo pieces, we can definitely just copy one of our sagas to get a bit of value. Alright, we did it. And now we'll copy something else. Just don't want to copy Visionary because then we draw from an empty library. Opponent's Midnight Clock triggers. They can put two more counters on it, but they need 12 counters before they can shuffle, so that's going to be a little bit too slow. Sanctum can get back something from the graveyard, but there's nothing that can really save them here. since the Fruitful Harvest triggers on the main phase instead of their upkeep. Alright, and our opponent finally explodes after letting us wait for a minute. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Turn 1 Sage, turn 2 Binding, essentially mills for 5. We've got our Herald Unites the Elves in hand already, so... Yeah, and we're even up against the mill deck, so if they mill Moritz, we're in business. For now, play Sage. We happen to draw one of our copies of Moritz, which is not ideal, but can still eventually play it, so... Alright, there's one. Well, we could maybe win on turn 4 here, if our opponent helps out. Secret Keeper mills for four. Might be a little suspicious if I mill myself with Sage, but I think I still do it. Now our opponent could have a counter spell for Unites the Elves, which could be problematic. And we do see Din say please times two, so I guess they don't have money left. Although I don't know if they'll expect a 4-mana win condition. Tutelage. Alright. We just need one more Moritz and I guess a 4th land. There we go, so just need to draw land now. 
and Binding can get one back, so that's taken care of. So now I can start milling the opponent just in case. And then Exile doesn't matter too much. Haven. Alright, just need my opponent to tap out. Binding gets back on untapped land. And we win the game. They might have Into the Story here. Which draws 4 and mills for 8. Or they might escape a sweet oblivion. Alright, GG's. Well, to be honest, the mill deck did successfully mill us out. But uh, they have to be the ones that take a draw step from an empty library first. So with a little bit of help from our opponents, we get the job done. And our opponent explodes. There we go, turn for win. It's unlikely to happen without some assistance from the opponent, but it's definitely possible if you get lucky and mill double Morit onto the next one. All right, we're on the play, a double Sage of Mysteries and a single Murid. So if we draw a sufficient amount of enchantments, we could get there. Sure. And then which land to play first? Probably this one. And then we either need to draw into our Harald Unites the Elves eventually, or Acolyte to get back Harald Unites the Elves, or Binding of the Titans, which gets back Acolyte, which gets back Harald Unites the Elves, so there's a lot of built-in redundancy here. Stomp deals with one Sage. And we'll get rid of Triton. Leafing enchantments in the graveyard is slightly better for Ephemia. And I might want to get back Sage eventually. I don't mind Acolyte get back Acolyte for now. Just to give us a bit of a board presence, mill some more cards. Femia could also be okay. Let's just get back Acolyte. Next turn, Morut can also copy Acolyte potentially and then trade off and uh, end up in the graveyard. Alright, so it's blue red giants if we're gonna see Glimpse. So they might have the Saga that wipes the board. Squash on Sage. Although we can get it back with Acolyte. Bottom, bottom. Yeah, let's more it copying Acolyte here. There's one more it in the graveyard, so... No Herald unites the elves, so we'll just get back Sage. This can now survive the 4 damage Saga. It's also Changeling, so doesn't take 4 damage. Alright, I can Acolyte for another Acolyte again. 
Just keep that going. And keep Sage in hand until we need to combo. Or I can go for Timurit Calls the Dead. And then next turn go Sage plus Timurit. Now let's just go for Acolyte again. And my opponent will need to get past my 4-5 to get in some damage. And as soon as they do, we'll have double Murit in the graveyard. Could see Squash. Alright. So double Murit in graveyard. And yeah, we could just top deck Harald Unites the Elves and win here. Another Moritz. So let's have a look. Think now Acolyte gets back Timurt Calls the Dead. And then we play Timurt Calls the Dead. Sure. Exile something random. Do we see a second Battle of Frost and Fire, maybe? Next turn I can play Sage and then maybe Morit copying. Timurt calls a dead and then we can scry towards our missing combo piece. Quakebringer prevents life gain. Draws two with the final chapter of battle. And that's going to start dealing two damage per turn. Alright, so there's Harald Unites the Elves we want to get back. So Moritz can copy Acolyte to do that. And then we should be good. Can play Haven first, so I guess there's no huge downside. Alright, so our graveyard is primed and ready to combo next turn. Opponent's probably gonna wipe the board with Battle of Frost and Fire, but hopefully that's the only interaction they have. And then they'll be tapped out for us to combo. A giant's grasp. Alright, so that gain control of our 4 5 changeling. Invasion. Opponent still has one card in hand. If that card is another Bone Crusher Giant, that could be annoying. So we'll try and set up blocks in such a way that if they do have a stomp, they'll be incentivized to use it to save their giants. So could double block here, double block here, and then they'll likely stomp a 2-2. Ah, never mind. We got our Acolyte of Affliction back. And another glimpse. Alright, opponent stepped out. We can combo. And that should be game. So it goes to show that even in a slightly grindier game where the opponent has plenty of interaction, we can still get the job done thanks to Acolyte of Affliction and Morit copying our various cards. So I'm definitely surprised by how resilient the deck is being. Seems to be performing better than expected.
And our opponent explodes. Sweet. Alright, so the Frostfilled deck performing surprisingly well today. We didn't face any super aggressive decks, those could definitely give us some issues. If the opponent's just curving out and hitting us with an Ember Cleave, then we're probably going to be too slow to combo off. But against uh, more grindy decks that try to play a slightly longer game, we can usually buy enough time to set up our combo. And once we get going, unless the opponent expects it and keeps up instant speed removal for Sage of Mysteries, it's going to be game over. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.